Brian Kenny here on the set of Friday Night Fights. I'm with Bernard Hopkins, Friday Night Fights boxing analyst. Time to play in your corner. We have questions here that Bernard has not seen. Are you ready, champ? I'm ready to go. Here's Charles in Nashville. Why such a low offer to Thomas Adamick, the Ring Magazine Cruiserweight champion? There was some negotiation between Adamick and yourself. Well, we ended up offering 1.2. They turned that down. 1.2 million. They turned that down. You, you know, you start off where you think it's fair and it's up to them to negotiate back. That's you know, that's fair negotiations. I mean, it happens everywhere. And they turned out $1.2 million that Richard Schaefer, who works for Golden Boy, and uh, they didn't take it. So they went on to fight another fight uh, for under 200000 Go figure. I don't know. Okay, I'm not even going to ask you what you were going to make because that shouldn't matter depending if that offer was one point two. But were there options involved? No options. No options. No. We didn't want no options on him. He had, they had no options on me. It was just, you know, a okay. cruiserweight fight for the IBF Cruiserweight Championship, and they turned it down. $1.2 million. Okay, that's from Bernard Hopkins. Here's Rich in New York. We've read about you and Adamick, Trinidad, Carl Frotch, and Chad Dawson. Will, he's, he's asking this now. Will you ever really fight again? Uh, I, I have it in me, yes. But, you know, it has to be a, a motivation. And one of those motivations is out of those four or five guys, you know, it has to be someone that motivates me out of those four or five guys. And, of course, second, I, I want to, you know, understand, I want them to understand that, you know, it has to be worth my while. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, if it is, then I'll, I'll be in there and I'll do another promise, another historic uh, 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 victory. All right. We know what motivates you. Yeah. And you need to be motivated. Exactly. I need to be motivated. I, to be motivated. I understand yeah. that. At this station in life, you deserve that. Here's Shane in Arkansas. Can Jermaine Taylor recover from his latest defeat and be a legitimate contender again? Good question. I mean, he's been knocked out twice, devastating knockouts. And, but he's young enough to bounce back. 30. But in the same token, how much been taken out of him for those two fights in, in the recent one with Falch? You, you didn't like the way he looked. In, I didn't like the way he looked Fouch. in, in yeah. either, either knockout, but especially sure. the last one. And, and Jermaine Teller has to do a lot of, a lot of soul searching on you know, what he's doing, what he's not doing. And after he do all that, I think it, it's up to him and his family, and I guess, to sit down and look at what is correct. Because he's, he's coming off in less than two years maybe two and a half years, two devastating knockouts. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of times a young or old fighter, a young and old fighter cannot recover from that. Here's Anthony in Davenport, Iowa. Is Floyd Mayweather one of the most overrated fighters in the history of the sport? No, he's not overrated. Everyone knows what Floyd Mayweather can do, especially showing against Oscar De La Hoya and also uh, against uh, Ricky Hatton. And before that, but now I think that he's starting to blossom. He took off a year and a half. I don't think that helped him in his popularity. But I think this could be the, this is the best time if he's going to come back. This, you know, this definitely is the best time to come back since the king is on top of the hill, and that is Manny Pacquiao. Yeah, by the way, I, you know, just to throw in, Diego Corrales, by the way, which was a super fight that oh. he just made look easy. Yeah. By the way, to throw that back there. But people w will ask these things. All right, here's Arturo in Cedar Rapids, Michigan. What are your thoughts on Chris Ariola, the heavyweight? Oh, it's some, it's some future in the heavyweight division, some life. But uh, the jury is still out. I mean, it's the heavyweight division is switching from one, you know, person to another. I mean, look how Hayes is fighting, you know, the, one David, of the Pisco yeah. brothers. David Hayes is fighting who's with Golden Boy. He's fighting the heavy, for the heavyweight championship. So right now the jury is still out who is actually the guy. Not the guy that got the belt, because we know who got the belts. They're over there in, in, in Germany and stuff. But where is the young heavyweight now? Mm -hmm. to step up to be the young American heavyweight. And right now, the jury's still out. Yeah, well, it looked good against Jamil McClain. But now it's like, can you beat a Klitschko? That's what it comes down to. Can you beat can you one, beat of, Klitschko? one of the Klitschkos because the, they occupy the top two spots exactly. in the heavyweight division. Here's Garth in Halifax. Why do fighters today struggle with conditioning as compared to fighters from the 30s, 40s, and 50s? Well, I think there's a, a lot of things that the, the fighters from the 40s and the 50s and also 60s, to be honest with you, I think there was more discipline, more hunger. They fought more rounds. More fights. More yeah. fights. And also, you know, they, they, what they had, they worked the best, you know, they worked with the best they had. And, you know, right now we got all these things to enhance this, the legal stuff, the, the shoes, the training, the bands that we use. There's so many things that we have to extend our career, but a lot of fighters don't take advantage of it. The, the right food, the rest between fights, to keep your weight at certain level in between fights where that's where the price you pay, gaining 20, 30 pounds before a fight in between fights, it's, it's taxing on your body. You never did that. I no. That's why you're a throwback. No. You're, you're like one of those. Marvin guys. Hagler type of script. That's right. All right, here's the last one here. Interesting question. Here's uh, Peter in California. Does the physical size of a fist have any relation 
to punching power? No, just hard to put in gloves. If your hands is big, then you have I don't think problems. it helps a little bit. But it, no, no. Matter of fact, you you know, it's the punch and it's the accuracy and the timing that spells power. Mm -hmm. And so it's not the size of the hand, you know, it's not the size of the dog that's in the fight. It's the, you know, the dog in the fight. The dog. No, so, fighting the dog. Yeah. Right, yeah. either way. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's All not right. the size of the hand. Answer is no, says Bernard Hopkins. Bernard, great stuff. Thank you Thank so you. much. Oh, by the way, you can uh, submit your questions on the boxing page on ESPN.com. You see that Ask Friday Night Fights guests. Also, you can sign up for mobile alerts as well from Friday Night Fights. Get all the latest information. Go to ESPN.com and boxing on the boxing page and click just below the Friday Night Fights logo. So do that and get the latest boxing news from ESPN.com.